Based off of some of the comments on last week's NXT review, I take it some of you did not agree with my assessment. That last week's show was crap. Kevin Owens versus Samoa Joe was dumb. That finish was stupid. And that if this is indeed the future of WWE, the future doesn't look that bright at all. Well, tough shit. That's the way it is. Why? Because that's the way I see it, so I fucking say so, therefore it is. But I mean, in all seriousness, like I mentioned in last week's video, you know, NXT does a really good job, I think, in terms of putting together their special events. I think they give you some really quality two-hour shows when the focus is just on the in-ring action, which is, as hardcore fans, what a lot of you prefer and kind of get your rocks off to as wrestling fans, fine. And therefore, those NXT shows are a good way for you to still enjoy professional wrestling the way you want to enjoy it. Uh, but the weekly NXT shows themselves are not that particularly good. They're not. They just aren't. And last week's show I thought was a bad show, and I'll stand by it. I mean, for Christ's sakes, they threw everything out the window as filler just to get to Kevin Owens versus Samoa Joe, just so that way these two fatties would be sitting there throwing half-connecting ham bones that looked fake as shit, so bad that even Matt Morgan and Crimson say, Come on, man! I'm saying... I enjoyed this week's show quite a bit more, and I think maybe it's just in part because I didn't have the expectations of Kevin Owens versus Samoa Joe, um, and it wasn't just about one thing. Now, I will say that this show was primarily about one story, and that was Kevin Owens and Finn Balor building up to their match July 4th um, on the WWE Network in Tokyo, Japan. A uh, little interesting side note. For some reason, I thought this was going to be a full-on NXT special. I didn't realize this was going to be the Beast in the East special. I'm surprised Brock signed off to go to Japan, frankly. I really, really am. But anyways, I thought they did a good job on this show of building up to that match. And that's primarily what I will focus on here with this review. Now, in terms of other things that happened on the show... I like the fact that they were giving Colin Cassidy a little bit of mic time, and it's not just Enzo Amore, although after watching, you can see why Enzo Amore handles pretty much all the microphone duties. However, you, know, you look at a guy like Colin Cassidy, he is about seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. So at some point in time, the guy will find a spot on the main roster that hopefully lasts longer than Eli Cottonwood's time up there. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to give him some microphone experience. And safe to say, he needs more microphone experience. It's that simple. As far as this Dana Brooke chick, I don't see what the big buzz is about. You know, they're, they're pumping up all this fitness model crap and this fitness competitor crap and, you know, talk about her competing at the this Arnold event and everything else. I don't really see where the on-screen character is matching up with that reality of the individual. And I don't think they're doing a very good job of connecting the two and meshing the two. And frankly, she's not very good in the ring. And this match that she had with old Blue Pants Cassie well, wasn't very good. It just wasn't. Uh, it was cool to see the hype bros uh, because I haven't seen Mojo Raleigh in quite a long time. He's about as limited as he was six months ago. Uh, but it was good more so to see Zack Ryder actually look like he was enjoying what he was doing and having fun with what he was doing. He given shit about what he was doing. You know, I just, I just, I still don't understand what the WWE why, why in three plus years they haven't given him something to do. I mean, are we still that petty where we're going to try and blame one segment's poor ratings from back in early 2012 on him? Never mind the fact that that was also a segment that featured, you know, a relationship involving John Cena. You, you just. It's so stupid. But it was good to see Zack Ryder having some fun. And, you know, I wonder if they will actually get back on the Mojo Raleigh bandwagon. I'm not really sure. But, again, a lot of that stuff didn't really matter because this was about one thing and one story. And, you know, when you only have an hour each week, it's hard to tell multiple stories effectively. Although I wish the WWE with this NXT brand would find a way to at least give you two different kind of unique stories within that hour. I'm not expecting four, five, or six, but you could at least do two. But at least I will say this week, with the one that they did and some of the interconnected pieces that they had, uh, they did a pretty good job. Uh, I love the opening segment featuring Hideo Itami, where he's talking and is speaking in his broken English, but getting a point across 
a point the point across, excuse me, that he's going to be there July 4th and that he'll be back sooner rather than later and that when his time comes, he'll be ready to take on whoever the NXT champion is. And I hope that that whole beatdown of Hideo Itami will be used as an excuse to turn Finn Balor heel and have Heaton be the one that attacked Hideo Itami, and then you can launch off into a story between those two. That's what seems to be sensible to me, and that's where I hope is the direction they eventually go with this. Uh, but, you know, Kevin Owens, uh, you know, he... He came out, and he, other than stumbling over his words at one point, <laughs> I like the way he recovered, though. The segment worked. I got the point across, and you have Finn Balor run out to protect um, Hideo Itami from Kevin Owens. Works just fine with me. And they did another one of these uh, video packages with Finn Balor, kind of the next layer of the evolution of the individual and as a performer, emphasizing heavily upon his time in Japan, which makes all the sense in the world heading into that July 4th show in Tokyo. Why the hell would you not do that? I mean, it was a really good, again, in-depth personal story piece. It was another good saga piece. It was another good journey piece. And WWE can do a good job of these. And frankly, the way they're putting together and producing these Finn Balor ones for NXT, this is something I wish they would do for Neville on the main roster. Because if you don't really have a story or feud to engage a Neville in, you got to get a way for people to connect with Neville on a level outside of just being athletic in the ring and doing some incredible moves. There's got to be more of a connection there, and one way to get more of that connection there would be to tell more of Neville's story, give him a path journey saga type of thing like you're doing with Finn Balor here. The only thing I don't like about the, this segment, again, just like last week's, as I mentioned last week, is that I don't think this is doing the job that it needs to do. Yes, it's talk, telling a journey story, a path story, a story story, if you will, and that's all fine and good. But we need to be connecting the dots here and putting the pieces together of what the Finn Balor character actually is. And speaking about the individual compared to the demon within, you know, there's not much of a character there. That's the problem. And while on one hand these in-depth personal pieces can get people to connect to a certain level or to an increasing level, it's not doing much to help the on-screen character. There's not much there. Once the entrance is done and once you strip away the face paint, you've got another guy. And that's the truth. It's the truth. It really is. So I would like to see, you know, figure they'll do another one on NXT next week. You would hope that maybe they'll try and tie in a little bit, try to do something to explain the face paint, explain some of these things, because these are things that need to be set up and need to be explained. Now, the main event of this show was Rhino versus Finn Balor again, which is okay. I actually enjoyed this match more than the last one that they had. Um, yeah, I like how they incorporated Kevin Owens here into the match. Him on commentary was absolutely outstanding. It was well done. I love the different layers of what they did within the show as they pieced it together and produced it, involving what they did with Kevin Owens and Finn Balor, building up to that match on July 4th, how they intertwined Hideo Itami in here, how they intertwined uh, in Finn Balor's story, other people involved with NXT, you know, Prince Albert and uh, Becky Lynch and so on and so forth. Then you bring in a rhino into the mix. You know, I like how they do this. You know, this, this is the type of stuff that they can do sometimes and do very, very well and do better than anybody in the business, as well as anybody in any form of entertainment. Like I said, though, I just wish they could tell more than one story each week. I'm not expecting an hour of compelling storytelling all throughout, because that's not all what NXT is about. In part, it's about getting people exposure. It's about getting people practice. It's about developing talents. But part of that developing of talents is to sit there and have them learn how to work within the confines of a story, how to advance certain narratives, how to work along storyline arcs, all of those different things, how to piece things together and continue to build them up till you get to that point of the feeder and pitch where you get the big blow off. You know, I already watch Raw, and basically right now, you've got three things going on, three stories. Something involving the championship, something involving John Cena, and something involving Roman Reigns. 
and the rest of it, frankly, is pointless filler crap. You know, and that's for a three-hour show. If NXT gave me a second real story within the hour, the, the, the on-screen product from a week-in, week-out basis would be so far superior to what Raw actually gives, you know, consistently. Consistently. But like I said, I really like how they did things, uh, intertwining different people, what they did with Kevin ba Owens and Finn Balor, how they featured them this week, how one got one on the other, then the other tried to get the other on the other. I like this. This was good. And most certainly much better than watching some Matt Morgan Crimson style half-connecting, fake-ass-looking ham bones, con not connecting like we saw last week in the main event with Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe. 